I'm Johan Diedrich, an artist, engineer, musician, and the creator of Dark Matters. I'm here to explain how machines can be taught to be biased, whether we intend for them to be or not. AI is trained through a process called machine learning, where a machine is fed large amounts of data. The AI is trained to produce a particular prediction based on the data it's given. Each time it's fed new data, the machine adjusts its parameters to make increasingly more accurate predictions. Bias in artificial intelligence is when a machine gives consistently different outputs for one group of people when compared to another. Typically, these bias outputs follow classical societal biases like race, gender, biological sex, nationality, or age. For example, there are machine programs used to screen resumes that will reject most, if not all, candidates who are women. These same types of programs are used to filter out prospective students applying to college, determining the terms of a loan, and even how much bail is set for someone. Biases can be the result of assumptions made by engineers who develop the AI, or they can be the result of prejudices in the training data that taught the AI. When you don't have data that fully captures the broad spectrum of humanity, then you get bias. Facial recognition is the classic example. The data used to train these systems lack examples of people with different skin color. Therefore, they do a poor job at recognizing people of color. When this technology, which is already bad at recognizing people with non-white skin, is used to investigate crimes, mistakes can happen. But the kind of training data that I'm most familiar with are speech recognition sets, the kind that are used to train devices like Alexa and Google Home. The data sets used to train speech recognition systems are usually produced by large studies at universities or private institutions. These data sets contain recordings of someone saying a phrase, a transcription of the phrase they spoke, and usually some metadata about the recording and the demographic data about the speaker. From my research, very few contain comprehensive demographic data that would let you know the speaker's background. What is available that is explicitly labeled African American or Black is very tiny. In the case for speech recognition, a 2020 study by researchers at Stanford University found that the most commercially available voice interface and speech recognition systems were much less accurate at recognizing Black English speech versus white English speech. The researchers used voice recognition tools from major companies including Apple, Amazon, IBM, Google, and Microsoft to transcribe interviews with 42 white people and 73 black people in the US. The tools misidentified words 19% of the time with white people and 35% of the time with black people. Only 2% of audio snippets from white people were unreadable versus 20% for black people. The errors were largest for black men, with an error rate of 41%. The researchers attributed this bias to both a lack of black speech data in the data sets used to train these systems, as well as the underlying acoustic model used to recognize speech itself. This is a problem because speech recognition technology is increasingly becoming the way we interact with technology and bias limits black people's access to technologies that are becoming more ubiquitous and prevalent in everyday lives. One thing that we can do is try to support work that creates data sets across the full spectrum of English speakers. The CORAL project, Corpus for Regional African American Language, is doing a great job to compile the first public corpus of African American English. As engineers, we should also put more effort into designing and building AI systems that are aware of this bias. I'd love to work with machine learning researchers and engineers around the world to rethink how AI systems can work better for hyperlocal, decentralized communities. As individuals, we can support projects like Common Voice and also look at alternative ways to protect access and monetization of our data.